a pheromone, the concept originated in 1959 with insects, and the idea was that there was one or a couple of molecules, very specific, that would have a very specific behavioral response. So you put the, one of these two molecules in front of a, a male wasp, and he'll try to copulate with whatever smells like that. So very... How do you know that the wasp is copulating exactly? Oh, you can see it. Really? <laughs> mm -hmm. Good and, thing. They, and you can even put in a static object, and they will try to copulate with. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, which is Question how, answered. <laughs> and, and evolution, of course, you know, the orchid, an orchid will figure out a way to be, to put those two molecules up and get all these horny male wasps to land in hopes of copulating. And in fact, all it will do is pollinate the orchid and leave frustrated. So Got it. it's a sneaky system. <laughs> but the pheromone concept Wasp involves very, very specific signals and very specific reaction, and it's got to be automatic. It's got to be hardwired into the creature so that you put that odor in front of the male wasp and bingo response. With humans, every time somebody's claimed that there's a human sex pheromone usually or some other pheromone, it's always a big mixture of things, not a single molecule. It's, uh, the response is not automatic like the wasp. It always depends on learning and context. And um, I think at this point, the pheromone concept scientifically just doesn't do any more work, and we ought to give it up. Leslie? Well, well. <laughs> I think if you're, I think if you're going to be very semantic about it and require that you can paint human sweat onto a lamppost and have someone be sexually aroused, then that doesn't work because humans are more complex than insects. However, hey, wait a minute, that's I think my it, line. It, meets, it, meets, <laughs> it meets many of the, the substances in that man's armpit meet many of the criteria of pheromones. So it's produced by a member of one species and it influences the biology of another member of the same species. Mm -hmm. So you scrape that stuff off of his armpit there's really good science suggesting it affects mood in women. It can, um, so it's, it's affecting mood but and, what and it? hormone Nobody's status. Nobody's ever been able to point to a single molecule. Only Not because, even three or only four Only because molecules. it's a bit of a fringe field. So we have, I think, you know, I think there aren't enough people working on the chemistry of dissecting what's in the sweat. Uh, you look so, so the absence of the data doesn't mean it doesn't exist, I would argue. No, but just every time there's a human experiment like that, they say, well, it's kind of like a pheromone, except we have to stretch the definition a little this way. And then somebody else has an experiment where it almost fits the definition, we have to stretch it that way. So now you've got a kind of Sanzibel pants version of a theory that fits everything and nothing. So, I, but I buy it. I mean, we, his, his, um, I that, believe what he's sweating can have those effects. I believe, in the, I believe in strippers. And I, I also... I believe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just not a pheromone. 